All right, everyone. So today on our first day of uh, part two of our class, one of the first things we, do, we need to do again is to resurrect our site. Uh, you, if you recall from last month, we were working on our site. We went home and we took a copy of our site with us because these computers have deep freeze. Every time you turn off the computer, it erases. It forgets everything that you did. So we're going to bring our site back to life again um, based on the, my example site here. I have a version 2 of instruction number four. Remember, I was giving you instruction sheets last month. So now we have a new e-commerce number four archiving v2. Let's take a look at this as an overview and then we will do this. There's a slight difference that I've got here on this version compared to last month's. Again, I'll turn on the printer during the first break and you can print these. But let's look at the PDF of instruction number four version 2. We've got the same uh, section at the top of archiving the site, which we'll do at the end of the day to take the site with us, so we'll do that together later. Uh, and we're going to do together in just a moment uh, the resurrect your site part, meaning we've got a site from last month that we're going to bring back to life to work with this month so we don't have to start over. We do have to do a few steps preliminarily as we saw last time and then we're up and running. So we'll do that part in a moment. This is what's new. One of the things that's new in this document, set the rewrite module. Um, we'll do this together when we get to it, but the point of this, this is one of the things that we need to accomplish so that our WordPress sites are a little bit more SEO optimized. How many of you have heard of that term, SEO? SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. I have this great website that I built. I sell products, but no one visits it. No one comes to my site to buy products. Well, that's because people don't know about it. People don't know about it, perhaps, because the site is not optimized for the search engines. That's a whole concept in and of itself, a whole class in and of itself. But here and there throughout this class, I sprinkle out SEO concepts for you that you should be aware of. One of them will be this, to set up our permalink structure of our site. And it's an extra step here. So we'll do it together when we get to it. But this is one thing that's different from instruction number four of last month. What I've also got here, a, a mention of Duplicator Pro. The plugin that we're using to do all of this backing up of the site is Duplicator, the free version. It works really well. But there's a pro version that has more features that I've used that has actually saved me, well, saved my client, a couple of times where the free one didn't quite work. One thing, for example, is at a certain point when your site is big, the free duplicator plugin has a struggles a little bit to archive the site. If your site is more than 150 megabytes large, the free version of duplicator seems to struggle a little bit. Um, the pro version, which is not free, I'll tell you the price in a moment, that one I've used it and it seems to handle that issue really well. If your site is quote unquote too big, duplicator pro seems to handle it well, uh, as well as other minor issues that sometimes crop up. Uh, so I have a link here for a discount on the pro version. Normal price is $59. Following that link you get it for $39. And so you can get the pro version and it's a license to then use the software on three websites. Uh, usually when you buy a license for a software you can only use it on one website. Follow that link, you get a discount, and you can then use it on three websites. And for me, for my company, Duplicator Pro has worked out better than the free one. Although, again, this is optional. If you do decide that you want those extra features, uh, that link will help you out. But our overview here is that we need to resurrect our site. So let's go through this together. We need to get our, our server software running. If you recall from last month, what we need to do now is go to your desktop and you're going to see, so minimize everything, go to the desktop and you're going to see the WAMP server software, that, uh, that pink uh, W, double-click WAMP server. 
Remember when you double click it, you don't get a big pop-up that says welcome to AMP server. What you do get is on the bottom right corner, you'll see a little red W, becomes orange, then becomes green. Did everyone get a green W in the bottom right corner? That's our WAMP server software. That's where our virtual server is going to. That's telling us our virtual server is running. And that's where we're going to set up WordPress to do what we need to do with, with e commerce. So, what we'll need to do here once we've got the W running, uh, open your web browser. Anyone will do. You've got You've got them all down here, Internet Explorer, Firefox, etc. I'm going to open Firefox. In Firefox, then, we need to see uh, the WAMP server screen. Remember, HTTP colon slash slash localhost no .com, .net, or anything, just localhost, because this is our server, our virtual server on our computer, courtesy of WAMP. This is the welcome screen to WAMP server. If you go to localhost, you should then see the, the pink W server configuration info but this is to show that, yes, you've got WAMP server running. We're ready for the next steps. Does everyone have the WAMP server screen running? So my step number one is saying we need to, we need to create, log into phpMyAdmin, create a database. So from the web address, localhost, slash php my admin or you can click on the bottom left corner of WAMP where it says php my admin either or so if you go to the address http colon slash slash localhost slash patreon my admin you should get the PHP my admin screen, a bunch of boxes and buttons and scary stuff. Here's where we're going to manage our work, our, uh, our database. We only need to do this once. So up at the top, we have a button that should say databases. Click the databases button at the top. This screen then says, or asks us to create a database. What's the database name? This can be anything we want, but we've all along we've been creating a database called WordPress. So let's simply click the box there and type WordPress. And then click the button Create. We're about to create a database called WordPress so that we can install WordPress, so we can bring WordPress back to life from last month. Make sure you click Create. You'll get the yellow pop-up that says that the database WordPress has been created. You'll see down here you've got a total of five databases. One of them is WordPress. And on the left it also says WordPress. People have asked me, uh, does it matter that it, say that, that it says that my WordPress apparently is in Swedish? Uh, I don't believe that's a problem. It's never been a problem, really. So um, if you're so Swedish, don't worry. That was step one and two here. We logged into PHP my admin. We created the database. Now we need to move or copy the folder that is the project from last month. So thank you for the donation of the of the project from last month. We need to get it from our network folder. I'm going to minimize everything. We're going to go back to the network folder because I put a copy of the, uh, the project from last month. Go ahead and open computer again.
network location classroom data, we'll open that folder again. Scroll back down to my folder, Campus Ecom 2. And you'll see a folder with you'll see a folder with um, yesterday's date. Just uh, just to have a folder there. This folder, we're going to copy it over to the to the WAMP folder. So I think we'll do it this way. Uh, leave that window open, and we're going to open another window, another computer window. So double click computer again to open another window. And we'll go this time to the local disk, the C drive, hard disk drive, local disk C. Because my instruction is saying move or copy the folder into the WAMP folder, www folder. So in the C drive right here, you should see a a WAMP folder, W-A-M-P. In the C drive, you should see WAMP. Double click WAMP. In that folder, you will see WWW folder. Double click that one. And now, from the network folder, I'm going to drag the folder, not the stuff in the folder, the whole folder. I'm going to drag the folder with yesterday's date. I'm going to drag that from my network folder into your www folder. You're dragging it over. You're copying it. <coughs> it might take a moment because it might be a large file, but to stop here and confirm. Does everyone have a copy of the project in their WW folder on their computer? Awesome. I did my database data file uh -huh. instead of WordPress. Uh -huh. Is it going to now? It doesn't actually. We can use any any full any database name at any point when we're on this point about bringing the site back to life. that project folder into their web folder. The easier way might be if you've got a USB. Sometimes a, uh, an email doesn't let you send a zip file because it thinks like you might have a virus. So if you need a USB to copy over, that might be better. Okay, so let's see my instructions. Uh, I copied that folder into WW folder. Great. In your web browser, access the installer file. In, in this folder that we copied, inside is a zip file and a file called installer. We need to, in the web browser, open the installer PHP file in the web browser. So I'm going to go back to my web browser and up on the address, Up 
on the address, we'll type HTTP colon slash slash uh, localhost slash 2015 1129 slash installer dot PHP. Now you might say that's not what it says on my instructions. Why? If my instructions are saying go to localhost slash my site slash installer PHP, why am I going to localhost slash date slash installer? That's because in the WW folder, that's the name of my project folder, that date, if my project folder was my site, or WordPress, or Victor's Bakery, or Kitty Cat. If the name of that folder, whatever name it had, that's the name I would be typing in this web browser, localhost slash kittycat slash installer dot php. So my notes here are an example. It's not always going to be like this. It's not always going to be localhost slash my site. If you have a folder called my site, then it'll be my site. But we have a folder called 2015-1129. That's why our address is localhost slash 2015-1129 slash installer dot php. Type that address and press enter, and you should see the duplicator installer screen. One, two, three. Does everyone see that? No. If it doesn't work, it might be a simple misspelling, wrong address here. It's, it's got to be exact. So my instructions, that was number four. In your browser, access the installer file. For example, type in that address. Number five, name is the name of the database you created. Number two, user is root, password is empty. So here, host, we leave that alone because it's localhost. Name is the name of the database we just created, which was WordPress user, according to my notes, is root, and password is nothing, empty. To see if this is working, click Test Connection. You should get this that says Server Connected Success, Database Found Success. Did anyone get any fails here? That usually has to do with either misspelling your name or your database, or putting in a wrong password. Okay, so then this site that's waiting for us in the WW folder needs to connect to a database. That's what we're doing here. That's what we've done last month. We're connecting the, the, this waiting site with a, with a database. I get success on both. and um, click at the bottom. I've read all the warnings and basically the warnings are telling us you're about to bring to life a site into a database. If the database already had data, this new site is going to take over that old database and erase everything in that database. And in a modern type of website like a WordPress site, um, it's like cutting out its heart. The, the database is the heart of WordPress. And so here we're saying be careful if you if you don't know what you're doing, you might Make, you might bring back to life a site on top of an existing site. We're on WAMP server, so we're on a testing server, so that's not a problem for us. But later on when we talk about let's make our site real on the internet, that's something you really need to, to pay attention to because you could, you know, you could uh, damage or completely delete an existing site if you're not careful. 
Let's click Run Deployment on the bottom right. It's just going to confirm we're about to do this. One more warning, one more chance. Click OK. What's that? Did you type root as the name of the user? No password. So here we are, we're bringing back to life an existing site. Um, this is saying, uh, here's the old settings, the new settings, which look the same, but think about it this way. I could be moving. Let's say I used to have an account at GoDaddy, and I want to move over to Bluehost. Or maybe I have a, an account at HostMonster, and I want to move to GoDaddy. This is one way to do it. You're going to move your site from one server to another, one domain to another. So this might say, if I was doing this for real, it might say victorsbakery.org as the old site, and victorsbakery.com as the new site. Both of these say the same thing at the moment, and that's okay. But if I was moving from hosting to hosting, I, it would reflect that. Here's the current title of the, of the website. I'm just going to change this. You can leave it if you want, but I'm going to change this to Victor's Bakery. You can put your name, you can make up a business, whatever. If you're borrowing our class project here, it, this is an existing site. But I'm going to put my name. And then notice also, I mentioned it previously, I'll mention it again. Um, here is also how we can create a brand new administrator account. Uh, students sometimes come into my class and tell me, someone designed my, web, my WordPress site for me. I don't know the password. I can't make a change to the site. What can I do? Well, using Duplicator, you can make a copy of the site, resurrect it on another server, and at this point here, create a new administrator account. A new account to log into it if you don't have access to the old administrator account. We won't do it at the moment, but it's pretty straightforward. Choose a username, choose a password. Advanced options. You usually don't have to deal with this. This is pretty advanced, so nothing under advanced. The only thing that I did was I just changed the name of the site. You can do that if you'd like. Click Run Update. On my instructions here, uh, we just did six. Click through the default settings to resurrect the site, number seven. After it succeeds, click on each of the four tasks listed, and number eight, when, com when you complete all four tasks, your site is resurrected and ready to use. These four tasks, I didn't get any errors. So errors deploy zero, update zero, warning zero. If you got any errors or warnings, that would be something to, to look into to fix. Warnings you can live with, probably. Errors, uh, most likely your site will be broken somehow. And usually it doesn't happen, uh, but when it does, you might have to spend some time on tech support. And guess what? You get better tech support from the Duplicator plugin people with purchasing the Duplicator Pro uh, membership. That $39 gives you a year of, um, I think at least a year, of tech support. Um, so if you're having trouble here and you purchased the Duplicator Pro, you have more priority to get those questions answered. So I didn't get any problems. If you got any problems, we'll wait for the break and then we'll figure them out. Number two, save permalinks. This is just going to confirm that you've set up the site with the addresses, the URLs of the new site. Click on number two. That'll ask you to log into the site. 
the login should be username admin and password is password with a capital P. I'm going to write it right here just so you can see it because I can't show you on the password box, but on password it should be capital P password. Admin and password. And click login. admin and the password is password, capital P. The worst username and password you can think of, but just for the purposes of the class, something memorable, click login. This screen here is related to set the rewrite module section. Uh, what this screen is saying, I, I mentioned it previously, but now I'll, I'll mention it more importantly. This screen here sets your permalink structure, which is the fancy way of what are the addresses of my website going to look like? Because oftentimes the default address structure of a WordPress site is this one, default, which will be that if I've got victor.com and someone clicks on the About page, it'll go to victor.com slash p157. If they then go over to the Contact page, the address will be victor.com slash p799. It'll just be the number of that page in the database. And for SEO purposes, that's worthless. That doesn't tell Google or Bing or Yahoo anything about your site. That number doesn't mean anything to the search engines. Therefore, you might not get found. So the default link structure of a WordPress is one of the worst options. A better option, and the one I recommend, is post name. This is going to show the name of your site and then the name of the page in a human readable way. That's what the search engines want, not a number. It doesn't want it to be the page called 157. It wants it to be the page about us. And that's what post name does. There's variations on it over here, day and name, month and name. And these are all way better than the default. But on this screen here, we're going to select post name. And then save changes. This change that we did, we're still going to come back to this, we're not quite done here with the rewrite module. This ch setting change that we did now makes our website to be localhost slash 2015, 11, 29 slash about slash products slash pumpkin pie instead of slash 127 slash 578, etc. The, the, the weird problem is, and I hope they fix it on a future version of WAMP server, is that um, there is an option that is turned off in WAMP server for that to fully work. That's what my notes are right here, set the rear module. We'll come back to it in a moment, but don't do this. But if you tried to go check out your site and you clicked on uh, one of these links over here, they would say not found. So don't worry about that if you check your site out and you set your links and they don't work. Don't worry. We're going to fix that in a moment. It's just that there's some weird quirk on WAMP server. You don't have to deal with this on MAMP, on the Mac actually. It's, it works. Hopefully on the next version of WAMP server they fix this. I'll show you how to fix it in a moment. But what we did was we changed the default structure and WAMP server got confused. We're going to fix that confusion in a moment. We're not done yet with, with our Step 8, we have to complete these tasks. Did you see that a different tab opened up? One tab is for the permalinks and one tab is still on duplicator. You can close the permalinks tab to go back to duplicator. We've done, we've looked, we've done step 1, which is no errors. We've done step 2, which is we've set the permalinks. We've set the, the correct addresses, although that's still pending. 
Step three would be that I visit my site and look at the home page, look at the about page, look at the product page, just check out my whole site, make sure it's it's not broken. Just like when uh, you know when you move and you check that the movers <coughs> didn't break anything, that's what it's telling you here. Check that the movers didn't break anything. Uh, I just moved recently, actually, and as I'm unboxing a few things, I noticed a couple things are broken. So make sure you always check what the movers did. Uh, so we're going to assume that we checked the site. Usually this duplicator process doesn't cause any problems. If there were problems, they would be listed right here. Errors or warnings. So I'm going to assume the site is tested. But to be fully, to confirm that fully, you would want to visit the site, look at every page, check every picture. could be time consuming. So we're going to say number three is done. Number four, click security cleanup. And what this is going to do is delete those installation files. Delete those files that brought back the site. Because conceivably, highly improbable but not impossible, you could accidentally go back through this process of the, ins of the duplicator installer and revert your site back to this point again. You could work on your site for a month or more time, etc. And you could accidentally run the duplicator again and erase all that you did. So step four here is to clean this up. So click Security Cleanup and click OK. And then we get these buttons. Delete Reserved Files. So click that one. It should tell you Installer File Cleanup. It deleted the installer, this backup file, this data, this log, and this SQL file. One weird thing uh, that the duplicator plugin leaves, however, it says it your zip file is still in the root of the WordPress site. So make a note that in the folder of the www folder there is still the zip file for some reason in the older versions of duplicator it would delete those it would delete that file as well I don't know why it doesn't do it anymore uh, maybe it's saying maybe it thinks that that's a very valuable file in case you don't want to delete it and, and such but this is actually not necessary because at the end of the day we will create another duplicator backup and it will create another copy of the file and it'll be the most up-to-date version so it doesn't do it here within this screen you have to manually go back into the www folder so on the local disk lamp www in the project folder you will see that zip file. It's got a little zipper on it. It's got a huge weird name on it. Just click it and delete. Right click it and you can click delete. Wants to confirm. Yes, go ahead and delete it. There we go. So now we've deleted the remnants of the old site. Now we're starting with this site at this point where we can learn everything that I that is new for this class. Everything that we did right now should be familiar. We did this several times last month. If you were new today, we're going to do it again. This is our process. And we're doing this because we're using this virtual server, WAMP, WAMP server to create a website on our local computer that is not accessible to the to the regular internet which is good and bad it's good that this thing that i'm still learning and making mistakes on is not visible to the world it's bad because then we have to take an extra step at the end of the class to then actually put it online for real but we'll get to that we'll take a break in just a moment but back on the web browser we're done with the duplicator screen. We've got the duplicator tab, I mean, and we've got the tools tab. 
close the duplicator tab. And here we are in the WordPress dashboard. We're going to take a break and then acclimate ourselves again to WordPress. But all of this process that we did was sheet number four. Actually, one more thing before the break, right? All of this process that we've done is to bring our site back to life so that we, we can then work on it and learn some new things. One of the new things was we changed the permalinks. And I was about to forget. We need to do this section here. Set the rewrite module. We're going to now tell LAMP server, we've got a new set of links. Make sure those links work. So let's do this. Click on your LAMP server icon, which is the one here on the bottom right corner, that little green W. Click on it. Um, hover over Apache, click on Apache. And then I made a mistake here, I thought I fixed it, but click on Apache and then not service um, Apache module. Sorry about that. I guess I'll have to put a version 3. Um, click Apache, click Apache modules, not services, sorry. Apache modules. Find rewrite module and click it. It's alphabetical. So just scroll all the way down to rewrite module. down. These are all of these extra settings that WAMP server has. Some are on, some are off. For some reason, the one that we need is off. So if you scroll all the way down, you will see rewrite module. Notice there's no check mark on it. Rewrite module. Be careful. There's also one called request module. People sometimes don't pay attention and click that one. You want to click on rewrite module. And what you will see is when you click it, you'll see probably your little W goes from green to orange and hopefully back to green. You'll see the you'll see the W change from red to orange to green. You're ready to proceed. What was this extra step? On the website now, if um, if you go back to the website and um, hover over the name of the site at the top left and click visit site, you'll see Kick Me Away blog. Click on the blog, and it should not be a broken link. It should tell you it should work because that's what the point of that rewrite module was. If you didn't set that rewrite module, it would say not found. But after all of this, let's take a break just to make sure we're all on the same page, that you've got your site back to life. You follow these instructions. I'm going to turn the printer back on. If you'd like a copy of this, you should also print out number five because we're going to start looking at sheet number five. It's uh, about 140. We'll take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 150. What you want to do is confirm that your site is operational, like mine. Um, you want to make sure you're signed in. If you came in a little late, you want to sign in on our pink sheet. It's right up there. You also want to make sure you've enrolled in the class. If you're not sure if you're enrolled, um, check with me and we'll enroll you. It's 140. We'll be back at 150.